National Bureau of Statistics said the aggregate value added tax stood at 697.38 billion naira in the fourth quarter of 2022. Hi, welcome to what's happening this at the top 10 stories. At number one, the National Bureau of Statistics said the aggregate value added tax stood at 697.38 billion naira in the fourth quarter of 2022. The VAT Q4 2022 report released in Abuja on Wednesday showed a growth rate of 11.51% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis from 625.39 billion naira in the third quarter of 2022. The report said the local payments recorded were 408.12 billion naira, while foreign VAT payments contributed 159.83 billion naira and import VAT contributed 129.43 billion naira in the fourth quarter of 2022. It said on a quarter on quarter basis the art entertainment and recreation activities recorded the highest growth rate with 43.82 percent followed by human health and social work activities with 35.82 percent on the other hand agriculture forestry and fishing had the lowest growth rate with 30.12 percent followed by activities of extraterritorial organizations and bodies with 19.81 percent at number two, the Independent National Electoral Commission on Wednesday issued certificates of return to winners of the February 25th, 2023 House of Representatives election in Nigeria. The INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, presented the certificates to members elect at the National Collation Center in Abuja. Yakubu had on Saturday said winners were declared for 423 legislative seats, indicating that supplementary elections would be conducted in 46 other constituencies. He said in the House of Representatives, 325 out of 360 seats have been won by eight political parties. At number three, the Federal High Court of Abuja ordered the removal of the name of Idu Oyiloyi, Labour Party Deputy Governorship Candidate for Benue State from the Independent National Electoral Commission's list. Justice in Aikwa in a judgment on Wednesday also stopped Oyi Loyi from further parading himself as the deputy governorship candidate of LP for Saturday's election, having voluntarily withdrawn his candidature. Delivering the judgment, Justice Aikwa said he had found that the evidence of the plaintiff, Chachi Adejo, in the case was credible. At number four, a fire outbreak took place at Akere Spare Parts Market at Jagunle in the Apapa area of Lagos State, with goods worth millions of naira have been destroyed. The lifeless body of a 65-year-old security guard was also said to have been recovered near the scene of the incident. The director of Lagos State Fire and Rescue Service at DCA, Margaret, in a statement on Wednesday confirmed that the fire started at about 3.28 a.m., adding that the Ajagunle Fire Station was the first respondent. At DCA added that the cause of the fire would require an investigation. At number five, operatives of the Adamawa State Police Command have arrested seven teenage boys for allegedly raping a girl. The suspected rapists include two 17-year-olds, three 16-year-olds and two 18-year-olds. It was noted that they are all residents of Kodomun village in Demsa local government area. The state police public relations officer S.P. Suleiman Goruje said in a press statement the suspect on 4th of March 2023 at 21 hours lured their victims into the house of the first suspect and forcefully had canal knowledge of her. He added that further investigations are being done after which the suspect would be charged to cut. At number six, the House of Representatives member from River State, Chinere Igwe, who was arrested with $498,100 before the presidential and national assembly elections has been arraigned in court. His trial resumed in court four at the Federal High Court in Port Harcourt, the capital of River State, on Wednesday. However, the defendants pleaded not guilty to the one count charge against him by the police. The court is presided over by Justice Stephen de Lopam. Recalling, Igwe, who represents Port Harcourt Federal Constituency 2, was said to be arrested with $498,100 during a stop and search operation on February 24, 2023. At number 7, the Central Bank of Nigeria has issued guidelines for open banking in Nigeria. Musa Jimo, CBN's Director of Payment System Management Department, stated that the guidelines were in furtherance of the bank's mandates to stabilize the financial system. The guidelines establish principles for data sharing across banking and payment systems. In the guidelines, the Apex Bank shall provide and maintain an open banking registry to give regulatory oversight on past funds, regulate operators and enhance transparency within the open banking ecosystem. It also stipulates consent management whereby consent of bank customers is required before their data can be acquired. 
and number eight, the Nigerian Bar Association has urged the Independence National Electoral Commission to fix all bugs or glitches that affected the bimodal voter accreditation system, the results viewing portal and other challenges during the presidential and federal parliamentary elections. NBA identified other challenges, insecurity at polling units, violent attacks on voters and officials, voter intimidation and snatching and destroying ballot boxes. Also, it charged INEC to exclude its staff engaged in more practices during the February 25th polls from participating in the March 11 governorship and state assemblies elections. At number 9, Richard Hugh Montgomery has been appointed as the new British High Commissioner to Nigeria. His appointment was announced in a statement by the United Kingdom government. Montgomery is expected to resume in April 2023. Montgomery is to take over from Katriona Liang, who had been the UK's representative in Nigeria since 2018. The High Commissioner is the UK's government representative in the Commonwealth nation. They are usually responsible for the direction and work of the consulate, including political relations, trade and investment, press and cultural relations, and visa and consular services. Finally, at number 10, Atiku Abubakar, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, has put together a legal team of 19 senior advocates of Nigeria to challenge the outcome of the February 25th election. Atiku met with them on Wednesday at his campaign headquarters in Abuja. The team is headed by litigation and commercial lawyer J.K. Gadzama. He further declared that it is crucial for them to go through this process, not just for himself and PDP, but also to reinforce constitutional democracy and safeguard its future generations. Recall that the Court of Appeal in Abuja had granted leave to Atiku Anubi to have access to all sensitive materials used for the conduct of the election. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.